Mauga is a problem that is taking over ranked. This pay to win meta is crazy with many people across ranks believing that Mauga is pick or lose, but is this actually true? In this video, we're gonna go down exactly what makes Mauga strong and more importantly, how to shut him down every single time. Now, if you're tired of losing to Mauga, smash that like, subscribe if you appreciate this video and let's get into it. So there's a couple of strengths that are really important to lay out so we know exactly what makes Malga tick and what we need to shut down or mitigate in order to still succeed. So first off, Malga is simply unkillable. Because of Malga's huge health total, lots of armor, and his life seal, he can feel nearly impossible to kill, and focusing it most of the time will be in vain apart from a few heroes that we'll talk about later on. Malga also pokes and brawls well. Both of these things he can do quite well. Setting people on fire is oftentimes going to force movement, getting people out of positions that he doesn't want them to be in for a substantial amount of time, especially if they're isolated. And he can slam people and burst them down with both his guns at the same time while gaining HP from close. So he's really good at brawling as well. And most brawl characters just can't brawl him in the 1v1. Now last up, Malga's ultimate is really strong. It's like grab on crack. And before when Malga's ultimate was first revealed, it seemed kind of weak primarily because Malga himself was weak at the time. But after his buffs, now that he's super strong, he synergizes super well with his ultimate. And oftentimes this is going to create a team fight win just all by itself if used correctly. Now let's actually deal with these strengths one at a time and tell you exactly how you're supposed to play against Malga in order to shut him down. So first section is killing the unkillable freaking god. So the true frustration with dealing with Malga is his lifesteal. And certain tank matchups up against Malga are nearly instant lose. And I know rock, paper, scissors, it's frustrating. I'm not on the balance team. I'm just here to deliver the message. But certain characters like Ryan and Ramatra can feel really, really terrible up against against Malga because you're going to be trading damage with him but when you do he's gaining so much health back that you're losing that straight up you're losing the exchange by quite a margin he's dealing damage to you and getting a lot of health back that you're doing back to him and if you're not playing these other characters perfectly like Winston Queen and Zarya they actually also feel pretty terrible against Malga now there are ways to play those characters that they can still get value but we'll get to that in a second Basically, any body of HP is just free HP and sustain for Malga. A Malga can nearly self-sustain versus these giant health pools, while the Rhine needs to get perma-pocketed to just barely stay alive, and you're going to lose in the immediate because you're not going to be able to get health while you're exchanging in a 1v1, and over the long game, having a tank that requires actually less pocketing than the Rhine does in the matchup means that you're wasting resources and you're going to lose that fight too. Now, is there any way to win? How are you going to play this matchup? Is it just like you lose instantly? Now, the actual answer is you avoid the Malga. And surprise, surprise. This is going to be a common theme throughout the video, but Malga shares a lot of similarities with both Roadhog and Orisa. Well, you actually just can't focus him a majority of the time. In our Orisa guide, where we talked about shutting her down, you're not supposed to fight the Orisa because all of her abilities are based on mitigation, where she is denying the damage you're doing to her. So she's basically wasting a lot of your value, a lot of your time, a lot of your attention. And she wants to be the one that is tanking all the cooldowns so they're not being used on her team and that's how she gets her value because she just shrugs it off Malga does a very similar thing with the health exchange because he's gaining so much health back he gets to tank in all the damage and then gain that health back shrug it off and not need resources from his team to do so which means he really wants you to focus him he wants the Ryan to swing on him he wants the tank to fight him straight up he wants everyone to pour everything they can into him not kill him and him shrug it off while his team gets to basically kill you for free because you're only focusing on him this means that your best option is often to avoid him and take the fight to the rest of the team this means that if you're playing junker queen you should be shouting past him and cleaving squishies zarya should be trying to build charge in the neutral and use her bubble to make an aggressive play in the back line these characters are not trying to fight the malga straight up they're looking at where he's positioned and trying to make a play to the sides of him or even behind him now we'll break this down more in just a second but the dps player should also just not be focusing the malga shooting the malga non-stop is not going to get anything accomplished and it'd be much better for you to use your damage and cooldowns on characters that you can actually kill in their back line, eradicate them, and then slowly but surely work your way inward to Malga last. Now, I understand that the Malga is not going to just let you do this. There are ways that you can still do this even in spite of what Malga does to stop you, but 
Malga is very good at stopping you, right? He's very hard to ignore generally because of his great movement on a low cooldown, but it's really not that much different than like Hog has been in the past where you ignore the Hog and then you just get freaking hooked and pulled in. But that's the game. And similar to Hog, Malga can't selectively fight multiple people at the same time if they're not grouped up. He has one movement ability and one slam so it's not like he can simultaneously deal with multiple angles or multiple people attacking his backline, which is one of the keys to shutting him down. Now, I did want to talk about some raw abilities that are really good against Malga, like actually focusing him, which is Anti and Discord. These are two raw, powerful ways to interact with him. Discord makes it so he's actually focusable at times, especially if he's playing in the open and relying too much on that lifesteal. He can actually be killed. And then Anti, properly timed and not Suzu'd, can actually kill him because it's going to stop his lifesteal. Now, specifically with Nade, if you throw it randomly in the neutral... It's often going to do nothing. And this is like when two teams are pretty far apart. They're just poking, trading resources. Anas will nade, and they do this a lot against hogs. And they're just like, I've naded this hog 10 times, and he's never died. Just because the hog is there and he gets naded does not mean your team are in angles to fight him, pushing him to fight him. The hog is actually in danger. Like a full HP hog that's naded is like, so what? Same thing with Malga. If he's playing far away from your team, and your team isn't actually in a position to push him, he still has a giant freaking health total, oftentimes armor as well. He's just going to shrug that off, and then he's going to let the nade fade and then get all of his health back. You need to make it so your team is either already full committing in, and then the nade goes out, and then he's actually killable, or the Malga is over committing, expecting the lifesteal, and the nade is denying him. Similar to how, like, if a hog goes for an aggressive hook, hooks someone in, doesn't kill them maybe, and then tries to heal his way out, he's relying on that heal to get him to safety, that's when the nade is powerful. Similar in this way, it's not powerful when the hog is behind the cart chilling, it's not powerful when the Malga is like across the map just poking, that's not where nade's impactful, and if you're just throwing nade in this neutral all the time, doesn't matter how many times you anti the freaking Malga, it's not going to do anything at all. Now, to be more specific, let's talk about the characters that are good versus him directly and characters that can be good versus him if you play in a certain way. So, the direct characters that are good versus him are characters like Ana because of her nade, because of her sleep, Zenyatta because of his Discord, and if we're talking about DPS that are directly good versus him, we have characters like Reaper that can actually straight up fight him in a 1v1 with decent movement. He has a huge hitbox. You're going to be exchanging, getting life steal, but you're doing a lot of burst damage. Reaper's actually a really easy and simple way. If you have a way to get in and get it close and have a team that actually commits, then Reaper's actually really great against Malga. And then Bastion is also a character that if you're doing these poke wars, Bastion, especially an enabled Bastion, can actually shred a Malga. Although it doesn't happen as fast as you think it would. And in a 1v1, you actually still lose. You still need the assistance from your team. But it can be a character that is good versus him if you're taking that type of poke fight more or less. Now, the two best tanks that are good against him are Sigma and D.Va. Sigma because he can kind of control the engagement, poke him from distance, and then he can also utilize both his shield to stop the lifesteal and his kinetic grasp to stop the lifesteal. These things both kind of in conjunction work decently well, but it's going to be kind of map-oriented. Some of the maps with the Malga can force more brawls. That's going to be a little bit problematic for Sigma. And then D.Va's actually really good because D.Va not only can eat his damage, which is going to stop him from healing but diva fits perfectly into the primary game plan when trying to deal with amalga which is find a weakness or a vulnerability in an off angling dps or a backline and dive it and kill it and eliminate the malga last so diva is really good at minimizing the impact of the malga while you look for these advantages where you can kind of you know, dive past the Malga and kill somebody or peel for your team and deny a Malga from getting heals when he needs it. That's a lot of what you could do. And that's why D.Va seems to be one of the strongest tanks up against Malga because she's good at both aspects of what is good against Malga, the denying him and also the diving past him. She's good at both where Winston, you can technically play Winston against a Malga if you're diving really deep past him with divers that are set up. It's going to require a lot of coordination, but you can definitely do it because your bubble can stop him, you know, from healing, and he's not going to be able to, like, get to you in time to stop you from killing his team. But unlike D.Va, he can only play one side of that. He can only play the ignore Malga and dive side. 
where Diva can play the ignore Mauga and dive side, but also the denying the Mauga from being aggressive and making aggressive plays. So like I said, Diva plays both sides of that very, very well, and it's one of the reasons why she's probably the best tank matchup up against Mauga. Now, characters that are indirectly pretty good against Mauga if you play well, first off is any off-angling DPS. If you're a DPS that can take an angle that is away from the Mauga, but then fight the back line, fight the DPS, fight the squishies, you're going to be just fine. And so, especially if your DPS can take a high ground, Mauga has a lot of trouble dealing with that. So, like, if you're a soldier taking a high ground, like on the far left side of Mauga, Mauga can't get to you, can't do anything about you, really can poke you a little bit, right? But if he's just poking you slightly from afar, he's not gaining that much health. So he's not unkillable and you're still going to be able to deny him. And then when he focuses on something else, you can peek. And if you have multiple DPS that are off angling in this way, super, super strong because y'all can get line of sights on the back line while also minimizing the effect of Malga. In addition to that, flankers are also super, super strong. So characters like Genji, Sombra, Tracer, these characters can just go in the back line and take duels with people in the back line, kill supports, kill DPS, and just completely ignore the Malga. And Malga really thrives when everyone is focusing him. That's what he wants. But when he has to try to peel, he has to try to go help his team from dying, has to go run back and like slam, you know, really highly mobile divers most of the time it's not even going to work and there's other characters that could do that better so you're putting him in a much more uncomfortable situation where he's trying to peel for his team he's trying to shoot divers where he's not going to get a lot of life steal and he's trying to help his team and keep them alive and he's just not going to be able to do that very well and those are the uncomfortable situations you want to put him in that's why i really do think that a flanker style especially centering around tracer that's super strong right now and then maybe an off angling dps or another flanker with the diva means that mauga can't gain life steal from the tank you know really poor in the neutral and then isn't going to be able to peel very well against these flankers so he's really going to be just really weak overall in that matchup and probably will either just straight up lose to that comp or just swap off now in general characters that are better at ignoring him are going to be great so actually characters that can play really far from him like widowmaker are pretty good because you're never going to be fighting the malga you can just fight from distance take angles and try to kill his squishies kill his back line or characters that have the means to ignore him and he can't press them very easily. So like Kiriko is a great example of a support that doesn't really get slammed on, doesn't really care as much. And that's kind of one of the weaknesses to characters like Ana and Zen in the compositions I'm talking about is while yes, you can nade the Malga, yes, you can discord the Malga, you're also susceptible to the Malga pushing you and jumping on you and potentially making a play on you versus a highly mobile backline doesn't care. You go, you look for an opportunity, you blitz his backline, you kill his squishies, you leave Malga as the last one alive, you just focus him down, he's dead. No harm, no foul. It's it's easy. I mean, like, you could, like, blitz their backline, you know, Tracer goes in, Kiriko teleports in, Diva flies over, you kill a whole bunch of people, the Malga comes in, tries to peel, tries to gain life, you know, he can't hit these flankers that are buzzing around, his freaking damage gets DM'd, he gets killed, you see, you get the picture, you're starting to envision how it's possible to shut down this character, and I'm doing this on purpose because some people, even in the higher ranks, truly think that Malga is impossible to deal with, and I'm telling you, he is not, he has very clear weaknesses, you just have to play to those weaknesses, and right now we're still in the learning how to deal with him phase. The last up in summary, let me summarize the rules and give you the five golden rules to beat Malga. Number one, don't play his game. Don't put him in a situation where he's good. Don't fight him where he can get free lifesteal. And that leads me to rule number two, control his lifesteal. Don't give him giant amounts of health or HP to just shoot and gain stuff from. If he's doing that, you can almost imagine that you're giving the enemy like an extra heal botting support because that's what you're doing. That's what you're giving. You're giving them a heal botting support that can enable the Malga because of his fire. Rule number three, play far angles and play height. If you're far away from him, he can't get to you very easily. If you're playing the high ground, there's almost nothing he can do to you. And that's especially why any high ground oriented map or a map that you could use the high ground, like think Nubani, Malga's terrible. Like he just doesn't really interact very well, has no way to scale the high ground. So you just force him point, then you take height from him, you kill his squishies, you take these angles and you're good to go. Rule number four, don't cluster. Don't put yourself in a situation where the Malga can get on top of you and force y'all into a brawl. This is the last thing that you wanna do. I would say unless you have a very specific composition with characters that could burst down the Malga himself, like let's say an Ana Reaper or something like that, we don't want to play a traditional really close brawl up against a Malga because then you give him a giant group to jump on and then gain a lot of health from.
And then the fifth rule, unless you have very set situations like that with On, Zen, Reaper, Bastion, or whatever we talked about, kill Malga last. Malga is the final target, the final thing that you should be killing after you achieve overwhelming advantage by blitzing his backline, killing a DPS, or whatever the case may be. Now, if you follow these rules and understand these strengths and weaknesses of Malga, you will stop auto losing to him and give yourself a shot of having a huge win rate against Malga. But definitely let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comments down below and if you enjoyed the content smash the like subscribe i really appreciate it and i want to make more guides to help you out anyways thank you and we'll see you next time